Dexter here. Welcome back to yet another game maker tutorial. And today, what we're going to be doing is keeping with the Mario theme from last tutorial. Uh, we're actually going to be doing pretty much the same thing, creating another Mario-based enemy. But instead of a Koopa like last time, we're actually going to be creating, obviously, as you guys can see here, and obviously in the title of this video, uh, we're going to be making a Piranha Plant today. So very exciting stuff. I love Piranha Plants. They're probably one of my favorite Mario enemies. And uh, this was actually a requested tutorial as well. So really quick, if you guys want to request your own tutorial for me to do, uh, feel free to post a comment in the video section, or the comment section below of this video, uh, or just send me a personal message on YouTube, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible, okay? So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and set the tutorial off by just running this engine really quick and showing you guys what the end result of this tutorial should look like. Uh, so as you guys can see here, we have two piranha plants, and the reason I put two kind of side by side, uh, one in the pipe and then one not in the pipe, is to show you guys what all is really going going on here. So um, this pipe for, uh, first of all, is actually just a tile in which I've changed the depth. So it's actually showing in front of the piranha plant. And then the piranha plant, I've actually added just a timeline because I figured it was probably one of the easiest ways um, to do this and also to make it so that it doesn't take up like a whole bunch of uh, like room in your actual piranha plant object just in case you want to put more stuff in there it's not all kind of cumbersome with with events and, and stuff like that so um, that's pretty much what we're going to be doing today this is what all should look like at the end and uh, yeah so I guess with that let's go and exit out of this thing here and show you guys what all is done to make this work so uh, starting off with the sprite here just to give you guys a little look-see on what's going on um, this is just a simple 32 by 32 sprite I came up with just something a uh, little doodle here uh, to actually have something to look at and uh, show you guys the piranha plant, I guess. Um, so yeah, nothing really special is going on here. The mask isn't modified. It doesn't really matter. Uh, basically what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter what your sprite looks like. It just has to be a sprite uh, to signify that there actually is a piranha plant there or whatever we are using this for, I guess. Um, next up, uh, we have this little pipe, and again, as I said earlier, uh, this is a tile, or I guess a background, whichever one you want to call it, um, and it's just a 32 by 32 tile, nothing really special going on here either. Um, the depth, we're actually going to change inside the room when we're laying it down, so we'll get to that probably at the very, very end. Uh, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and actually skip the piranha plant timeline for now, and just go straight to the object, um, because there's only, as you can see here, there's only one event, and there's two actions. The first one is our initiating of the timeline here, and our second one, I'm going to drag this over here if I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so our second one is basically just kind of laying out uh, the image speed, because if you saw in the sprite, the image speed uh, was a bit too fast, considering there's only like four uh, frames, so I just slowed it down to not 0.3. Not needed, of course, of the tutorial, unless you have maybe the same thing as I have for images and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, that's not really needed uh, for the tutorial to work. What is needed, though, is this initiating of the timeline, which you can actually find in main 2 tab. Uh, it's going to be right below the timer here, or alarm, excuse me. It's going to be called set timeline. And I was going to do this in code, but... Doing it in code is actually a bit more tedious than it is made out to be for the DND. Uh, so I decided to just do a regular action and uh, get it over with. So what we have here is our timeline. We're initiating our piranha plant timeline. Position doesn't really matter for this case. Start immediately. Yes, we want it to start as soon as the you know uh, 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 what is it object here is created. And then the loop uh, we want it to loop over and over again. So. That's what I said it do. All right, so keep that in mind when we go over to our timeline, okay? Which we're going to do right now. So what I've done here is, I mean, as I've said earlier on uh, the very beginning of this tutorial, the reason I chose a timeline for all the up and down kind of stuff is, as you can see, there is kind of a lot going on here, a lot of uh, uh, steps or whatever they call them here. Uh, what is it? Add uh, moment. So there's a lot of moments here. And in each one of these moments, I've added a code. So uh, the code is move towards point X, uh, or because we're not moving horizontally, it's just regular X, and then Y, I've put minus 10, because we are going to move up and down, and as you guys probably know, the Y is the vertical axis, and so I've done Y, negative uh, 10, or minus 10, so we're going, uh, what is it, we're going up at 10, 
and then uh, the speed is going to be just set to 1. And you're probably going to want to fiddle around with this a little bit uh, just to get it to your liking. So, I mean, change the, the Y from 10 to like, I don't know, maybe 5, and then the speed at like 0.5, I don't know, whatever whatever suits you, whatever floats your boat. And then I've... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I went ahead and uh, added another moment, and I just put 60, and of course you can change these moments as well, these are basically how paced out, for those of you who haven't really used timelines before, um, how paced each one of these are, so like, it goes from 0, it starts at 0, when the timeline initiates, and then it will count all the way up to 30, which I believe 30 is maybe like a second, I believe it works like steps, so like moments are like steps, so like 30 step or moments, I guess in this case, is going to be equal to like a second, I'm not sure on that, but I'm just guessing here, um, but anyway, it would count up to 30, and then at 30, it would obviously initiate this code, and then this code would activate, until it goes up to step 60, and then something else would happen, and so in step 60, uh, I put speed equals zero. So we're going up until step 60, and then we just stop. And we're going to stay stopped until step 90. And obviously, I mean, as I showed earlier, I just added another moment. So I went like 60, and then I went up to 90. And then at uh, moment 90 here, uh, this is the same thing, but this time we're going or doing y plus 10. So we're going to go back down. And then, of course, at the same speed of 1. All right, and then step 90 to 120, and I'm going up if you can't tell by 30s here, so yeah. So it's like 3, 6, 9, 12, so in this case it would be 30, 60, 90, 120. Uh, we're just going to stop, all right? And then basically because we've reached the end of the timeline, um, there's nothing else to count up to, so uh, remember back in our object how I put the loop? That basically means that once we've reached the end of the timeline, it's just going to loop over again instead of just like stop. All right, so that is basically um, how I've done that. And just really quickly to reiterate, you could actually do all what's in the timeline in the object itself. Uh, you just have like a lot more like alarms and stuff. So you'd go like alarm zero, and then basically everything that you've done in here, but just with, with like alarms. So you'd have a lot of alarms here. And you can see I would get kind of cumbersome and stuff just for, I mean, what you can simply do in a timeline. So that's why I chose it to do uh, the way I did. And sorry if I took a long time to explain that. Um, I just want to make sure that, I mean, I have done it a bit of a weird way. Um, but I just want to make sure you guys understand why I actually did it that way. All right. And uh, obviously, for those of you guys who have used timelines too much for, I want to explain for those guys. So uh, finally, the last thing that I want to go ahead and get out of the way and show to you guys is the adding of the uh, this tile here. Remember I said that we get back to this earlier? So what we're actually going to do here is if you place a tile, you go to your tiles tab and automatically you can use any of your backgrounds as a tile. Uh, a lot of you I'm sure already know this but basically uh, you have what's down here as I'm going to go ahead and actually minimize this here bring that down there. Um, so down here you have your current layer. Um, they call it layer, but it's basically just tile or background, if you will, uh, depth. And um, it works the same as object depth over here. So what I've done is if I place a normal tile on the default depth, which is like, oh, I guess I don't have the default depth. Um, but basically the default depth is like a million or something like that. Uh, let me just go ahead and create one. Uh, actually, I'll just go zero. So if we create this pipe right now at zero uh, tile depth, be like that. Oh wait, hold up, <laughs> hang on here. Okay, good. Uh, let's go and change this to like five. All right, we should place this out five and oops. There we go. So it will actually be placed behind the object, and obviously that's not what we want or what we want. So let me go and delete that really quick. And uh, let's go ahead and, just for the sake of doing it again, showing you guys, uh, let's create a new depth and go negative 5. So we're doing um, basically in front of stuff. Uh, we can go ahead and place it in front of our, all of our objects now, and there we go. And uh, that's how you do, like, tile depths in a nutshell. And, of course, you can obviously change up 
your depth of your piranha plant object or any object for that matter and it will basically kind of switch between and, and stuff of depth so anyway I'm not going to go any more into that than I already have because it will just get kind of confusing and I'll probably start to um, just uh, to babble on a little bit so that is basically how that works guys and uh, that's pretty much the whole entire tutorial so hopefully you guys enjoyed this hopefully it works out for you let me go and just run this really quick again so you guys don't get super bored of just watching a blank screen and uh, yeah I'm sorry if it took me a little while longer to explain stuff you guys know how I am if you guys have watched me for a long enough time I like to just ensure that everybody gets kind of what's going on I don't want to leave anyone in the dark and uh, yeah so that's basically it uh, code should be found in the description even though there's not really a lot um, but yeah I'll just put it in there nonetheless and uh, until next time guys until the next tutorial until the next video I guess this has been Rex for a year and uh, until then I will see you all next time it's kind of a weird, weird ending, kind of like mix things together. But nonetheless, hopefully you guys have a good day. And, uh, well, I said it before, I'll, I'll see you guys then. <laughs> Bye.